All right, everyone, welcome to the Jag Hawk Talk, a district podcast with Dr. Pruitt. Today's episode, we'll be getting to know Dr. Pruitt as the new ACSD superintendent. Welcome, Dr. Pruitt. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm also doing well. Doing good. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing. Good, good. Great to be here. Uh, right. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, you know, just your personal life. things. Sure, Maybe. sure. So, um, one, thanks for doing this. Really excited about um, the, the next sessions that we'll have moving forward. Um, <clears throat> I'm originally from Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, that's where I was born and raised. Um, I was one of those students um, in school um, that was involved in a lot of activities, football, mm-hmm. basketball, track. I, w- I played trumpet, and so I was in symphonic band, jazz band, uh, played for the orchestra sometimes. Um, really enjoyed school. Um, uh, when it came to my senior year, um, I graduated and made the decision to join the Marine Corps. Uh, one of the best decisions um, I made in my life. Um, one, it, it got me out of um, Indianapolis, and it actually um, gave me some skills um, that I use today as a superintendent. Um, not to mention... Um, got to make, got to meet a lot of great people um, while I was in the Marine Corps. But the skills that I think that really apply to uh, this position and other positions that I've had in, um, in education, um, teamwork, um, being a good listener, um, being a good decision maker, um, ensuring that I'm knowledgeable about um, the work that I'm engaged in, whether I be a teacher, a principal, a district administrator, um, or now a superintendent. And so, um, but also um, understanding that as a leader, um, one, of my, one of my jobs is to make decisions, but also understanding that as the leader, the decisions that you make, not everyone's going to be happy with those decisions. However, if you base those decisions that, you, that you're making um, on what you value and what you hold dear, then it allows you to engage in the work in a really deep level, but then also um, be assured that um, the decisions that you're making are having a positive impact on you know, our, our, our kids, but then also um, our principals and our teachers that are serving the students that are um, in our district. And so... Um, I, I went on a, a tangent. Sorry about that. Oh, no. But while, while, while in the Marine Corps, I had planned on making it a career, but um, ended up having to get medically discharged. And um, it actually coincided with me graduating from Purdue University. Um, okay. So while I, was at, while I was at Purdue, while in the Marines, um, I had the opportunity to major in elementary education. And when I graduated and when I was discharged, um, my wife and I moved to Chicago where um, I started my education career as a first grade teacher. And so I um, was a first grade teacher in Chicago public schools. Um, I also taught um, intermediate grades um, in you know, fifth, fourth grade, but then also taught middle school. <clears throat> um, after teaching, uh, um, I was lucky enough to work with principals that um, really encouraged me throughout my career. And so I had the opportunity to apply for a program called New Leaders for New Schools. Um, it, it allowed me to um, be, a, uh, be a resident principal for one year and um, work under a mentor principal. Um, after that one year, um, I received my first contract as a principal in Chicago. Um, and it was on the south side of, the, south side of Chicago. Um, and in Chicago, we have um, pre-K through eighth grade buildings. Unlike here in Ankeny, we have um, our K-5 buildings, we have our six, seven, eight, nine, and high school mm-hmm. buildings, 10, 12 buildings. Um, I was a principal of a pre-K through eighth grade building and then my kids went on to high school. Nice. Right. So uh, knowing where you came from, 
um, you know, and then see where you are right now. Why did you choose to come to Ankeny? You know, what motivated you, that type of thing? Great question. So, um, while in Chicago, um, before I came here, I was over um, all the high schools in the system. And um, w- knowing that I wanted to be a superintendent, I was really looking for a district where I thought that uh, the skills and the experience that I had gained um, in Chicago and in Houston would be a value add to the districts uh, that I apply to. And what Ankeny offers um, is an opportunity to come to, what it offered was an opportunity to come to a district that was doing really good things. But based off my conversations with the school board members and community, had a desire to do better things for um, the students, mm-hmm. the principals and teachers um, that are serving those students. And so um, I think that um, the way I work with um, school, uh, principals, um, the way um, I, be, I was able to build strategic plans in my previous districts, um, the way I worked uh, around CTE programs um, in both Houston and Chicago, really serve the interests um, of um, the community here with regards to um, improving the overall student experience um, as far as ensuring that every kid has a concrete post-secondary plan and whether students wanted to go to a four-year college, a two-year college, or go straight into the workforce or the military, um, my experience uh, has allowed me to support students uh, in that way. Do you have any plans for doing that? Absolutely. And so luckily I've had an opportunity to meet extensively um, with the president of DMAC, um, uh, Rob Denson. Um, He has um, a lot of really good programs in uh, with DMAC um, across uh, across the state. And I've had an opportunity to meet with some state representatives around future industries um, with regards to you know what's going to be needed um, here in Ankeny and in the state. And there's a wide interest in our business community with regards to how we support our kids who want to be um, future carpenters, welders, um, auto mechanics, um, work in HVAC. Um, and um, there, based off that desire, I think that there's a, a lot of momentum uh, for our district with regards to what that might look like, not only in our two high schools, but then, you know, what's the vision for what that looks like in three to five years or seven years uh, for our city and district? Of course. Yeah, that kind of brings us into uh, one of our next questions, you know, um, in the next 10 years, per se, you know, what do you see changing? Like, what is a major change that would be happening to the district? So I think that one of the major changes is that we're going to be we're going to be continuing to grow mm-hmm. and so with our growth uh that means we have to look at um new buildings um we need to uh, start considering purchasing land um mm-hmm. uh, in the city whether that be on uh, the west side of uh, 35 or, or on the east side of 35 we really need to begin partnering with um, the city um, and um, our business community around uh, where, and our parents around where these schools need to be uh, built. Um, I also think there's an opportunity within the next 10 years to really, to really think about um, the types of programs that we could bring um, to our district. I, I talked uh, previously about some of the CT opportunities, but mm-hmm. uh, many parents have talked to me about uh, the possibility of IB um, internet, uh, yeah. IB bringing that to the district. I actually grew up in an international baccalaureate school. Oh, um, really? Elementary school downtown, Walnut Street School, yeah. Um, I went through that uh, preschool through fifth grade. Um, it was a really great experience, and, you know, if you could bring that here to Ankeny, that would be awesome for a lot of people. Yeah, I think that uh, just as far as uh, programmatically, I think mm-hmm. that that's an, just another option um, for our families or future families that may be thinking about mm-hmm. coming to Ankeny. Yeah. But I also think that something that, uh, as we look to t- uh, 10 years from now, what does Orbis look like in 10 years? Yeah. You know, right. are, are we still just occupying a space um, in Northview or is Orbis in its own building? Um, yeah. Or is you know, what does that look like in conjunction with 
our CTE programs or IB programs. So I think that we have an opportunity Mm -hmm. with our strategic planning process that we have in place to really dream about um, what Orbis looks like, what our CTE programs look like, what additional um, academic programs we could potentially bring um, to our community to, again, enhance the opportunities and experience of all of our students. Um, So kind of going off on that, how would you say that like family should play a part in like a student's education? So as a father of five, I think that parents are the first teachers. And so I think that uh, what I've seen so far from our parents um, and how they've chosen to engage me um, at our forums, um, at my parent advisory council, um, at um, in schools when, when they see me, um, parents have um, an interest in their students' experience. They, they want their students to be safe. They want them to have high quality teachers. They want them to have high quality principals and they want them to have access to high quality program and resources. And so I think that mm-hmm. um, as, as parents continue to advocate for our district, um, their individual students, continuing to partner with um, their child's teacher, continuing to partner with um, the principal um, of their school around how they can shape that experience and improve outcomes for not only their child, but then also children within the school and our district. Right. That's good. Um, so what adaptions from COVID do you believe we should keep as like a district? Adaptions from COVID. And so I think that we what we learned uh, during the year and a half um, of COVID um, where we had to take students out of school is that we can use technology much more effectively moving forward. And not that we need to um, have everyone learn from a computer, but I think that when we think about what AP classes look like, you know, so our, if we aren't able to offer certain AP courses or CTE mm-hmm. courses, there are yeah. some um, virtual option, options that we can begin thinking about around ensuring that um, if a student wants a particular AP course, that we're able to provide it online. Um, also, with uh, some of our CTE programs, there are some options with regards to how we provide those options uh, and opportunities for our kids um, around CTE program programs um, that are that are virtual. Um, so, in addition to that, you know, kind of the same type of question. So, say a student, a students have a snow day. Would you take that adaption <laughs> from COVID? For going online and putting <laughs> You're going to get me in trouble. So uh, I think that it would be a wonderful idea with regards to um, rethinking snow days. Um, one, if we have um, really good programming um, and technology that allows our, our students and teachers to access um, their hardware and go through a, a rigorous lesson during during a snow day. I think that that's an option, but I, I also know that um, that there is some tradition, you know, and, and it's just not here. It's everywhere in the United States that you know students like snow days. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think teachers like snow days, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and so for I think sure. that um, it would be really important for me to to work with. Um, our board, uh, our board members, and our you know principals and teachers to really think through what snow days look like in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that just because of the level of of, of activities that um, our students have access to in, in the district, um, extending the school year um, with, with with a snow day, I think sometimes just isn't an option because once the the end of the school year hits. Um, all of you are just really busy with either work or other activities that you're engaged in where, you know, does it really make sense to extend the school year at the end of the year versus taking advantage of the technology um, that we that we have? Um, I think another advantage of the technology or what we've learned from from COVID is we actually don't have to meet face to face all the time. Yes. Uh, I think that yeah. um, what it taught us was that we can collaborate and meet in different ways and actually get work done in an effective way if we if we do it right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. going back a little bit, back to the snow day thing. So 
So you you're, guys, you're not going to let this go, are you? <laughs> well, I just have a lot of questions about it, I guess. Hayden has a one-trick mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so say you guys were to move to online work days during a snow day. Would that mean the end of the year is cut shorter because those snow days are being used for online instead? So the way I see, the way I would see it is that um, if we do have a snow day, we would we would be able to keep uh, the, the the calendar for that school year. And so we, it, there would not be a need to shorten it. Because there's built-in snow days, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. All right, everyone. I, I think that's a pretty good place to end off our first episode. Uh, thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you all next time on the Jaghawk Talk. Talk.